We're on the river Tabajos in the Amazon basin, and everyone sitting in this boat is somewhat anxious. The man with the walkie-talkie is Eugenio Scanavino Neto. We're bringing eight patients. It's been his greatest dream for 20 years. Now it's finally reality, a mobile hospital. The women and children come from settlements along the riverbank to be treated here. Most of them have no idea what to expect. We were surprised to find the ship equipped with the latest medical technology. Eugenio sets to work right away. Now, in addition to the preventive work that we do, we can finally offer quality medical treatment to these remote villages. The people deserve it. I'm filled with emotion by the thought that we are finally able to do this right outside their homes. At last, they have the same rights that every citizen should have. I'm going to press down a little now. It's nice here on the ship, but it still hurts, doesn't it? Where exactly does it hurt? According to the World Health Organization, 1.3 billion people worldwide live without access to proper medical facilities. The receptionist is kept busy. There are 40 patients to see this morning. Eugenio spent five years negotiating with Dutch sponsors. This is the ship's first day in operation, and he didn't want to miss it. It makes me sad that I can't come here more often. I'm always on the go, looking for sponsors, describing the situation in the Amazon basin, trying to introduce our technology and our concept to regions in order to benefit even more people. Although I'm not here, we've got a great team and the communities can stand on their own feet. It all functions without me. I've been trudging around with my doctor's bag for 20 years. Now that we've managed to get everything set up, I rarely work here. It's a bit sad, really. We find out just how much it all means to him when we travel further down the river to the village of Sorowaka. It's his first visit in four months. His brother, Seitano, has been seeing to everything. He looks after the project in the region, while Eugenio travels the world looking for financing. He says it's tough work. It gives you wrinkles and causes your hair to fall out. And they're short of money again. Stop it, you're making me cry. It all began here in Sorowaka. This is where Eugenio first got the idea for his Saudé e Alegria, health and happiness project. When he first came to the village as a doctor in the late 80s, it was completely cut off from the outside world. He was forever treating the same illnesses, dysentery, worms, because the people drank the dirty river water, which they'd fetched from several kilometers away. Now they wash dishes and running water. <laughs> Eugenio and the villagers drilled wells, set up a reservoir, and after adding a few drops of chlorine and a simple filter system, they had drinking water. Mm. Eugenio, is this a permanent system? Yes, it is. When it was completed, a commission was set up in the village to look after it. Every family pays, uh, how much? 15. 
15 reals a month. That goes into a general account to cover repair work. There's a good reason why it works. There is no public tap. If there were, people would help themselves and no one would pay. But because each house has its own water supply, every family feels responsible. The access to clean water has dramatically changed people's lives here. There was a time when two children from one family died here in one week. I lost three children in one week. Now, thank goodness, that's all in the past. A few months ago, an internet cafe was set up here deep in the Amazon. It's yet another of Eugenia's projects. To us, the Amazon is really about the people who look after it, the forest, general well-being, education and employment. It's all part of a whole. We view it as an integrated concept, not a bunch of individual problems. It all goes together. This is also part of it. Eugenia shows us what it's like a few kilometers further on. He says that if living conditions in villages deteriorate, people are driven out and deforestation starts immediately. This used to be a dense forest. That's how it starts. There's still some left here, but up ahead are vast stretches of cleared land. These trees might look like a forest, but they aren't. There's another area of deforested land behind them. Sometimes they leave a strip of forest to hide what they're up to. Like over there. First, trees are cleared. Then come the soybean plantations. In the past two years, soy barons have cleared an area more than 70,000 square kilometers, as big as Bavaria. Countless villages were raised. Our time here is almost up. As the boat sets off for home, we ask Eugenio what he thinks of his image as a good Samaritan. I think it's a label that comes from the outside. It's much easier for people to believe that someone who does social work and who gets things moving is a do-gooder, an exception in society, than to recognize that everything is possible, that anyone can do it, and really set processes in motion that could bring about even more change. Eugenio has certainly changed the lives of more than 150 communities along the river Tabachos, and he's not done yet.